Hello, this is Brian doing a video blog for David Price. He's asked me to talk a little bit about the pandemic as it applies to Russia. I have some Russian contacts with whom I speak maybe once a week on the weekends. And I get the lowdown of what's happening there. Now, ordinarily, I would just interview them and translate, but it's really not what they would want, and I wouldn't want them to have a problem. These people are roughly my age, and that means they grew up in the Soviet era, and they know full well what would happen if they would embarrass the government publicly, especially the Putin government. So I'm just going to relay the information so we can protect the innocent. I'm going to be showing you a video, or parts of a video, from the opposition leader in Russia. His name is Alexander Navalny. He is an attorney, and he has been thrown in jail many times by Putin. He has run against Putin, but you know the votes are never really counted there, and you can see that he'd have no chance against Putin. But what I really wanted to talk about in addition to Navalny is really what, what he's talking about is that while all this pandemic is going on, and it's gotten worse there, because if you look at Moscow, you know, there's a lot of public transportation, subways, taxis, trolley buses. And it, the, the deaths and the, the cases of coronavirus have skyrocketed. And while that's going on, while that's going on, the, the PPEs aren't there. And the, the people who live in Russia... I mean, they're been given a holiday, basically, but they don't get the stim checks like we do. So it's, it's a very trying situation, okay? So let's take a peek at this video for a second. Смотрите, так выглядит настоящая роскошь. Огромный дом с колоннами, ухоженный участок с аккуратно постриженными газонами и деревьями. Okay, so he's basically saying, let's take a look at this huge mansion. Just beautiful entrance. Um, just, just absolutely gorgeous. Let's look inside. There's gold, there's gold, there's gold. Everywhere there's gold. Lamps of gold. Chandeliers. What luxury. Where does this come from? Some king or queen or some Arab prince? Look at the main room. Columns of gold. The furniture. The walls. Gold everywhere. So what's going to happen is Navalny is going to explain to the Russian viewer, this beautiful mansion, where could it be situated? Is it on the outskirts of Moscow where the oligarchs live? Who knows? So he says, in reality, where, where, where exactly are we? The Volga? I'm sorry. Но нет, ребята, это не Волга, потому что на другом берегу мы обнаруживаем Манхэттен. И что? Said, well, folks, <laughs> no, actually, we are on the the the, uh, the banks of the Hudson near New York, Manhattan. So already we know something's up here. He's showing a mansion, somebody's mansion during a time of pandemic. Whose mansion could this be? Could it be Putin's mansion or the mayor of, of Moscow's? 
полюбуемся узнаваемыми городскими пейзажами. А so again, he starts talking more about this area. And who could be, who could own this mansion near Manhattan? And he mentions the name Yelena Malashova. Now, Yelena Malashova is kind of like the Dr. Fauci of Russia. But she works for Putin. And she will defend him in any way possible. So she purchased a $6.4 million dollar mansion in Alpine, New Jersey. She and her husband. Now she's on many of the shows in Russia, the daily shows, the evening shows. And again, that $6.4 million dollars in American money. Okay? And here you can see the, the purchase agreement there. That's her, address, uh, her signature and her husband. If you went up to Alpine, New Jersey, you would find that mansion with the beautiful pool in front. And why does, why does Navalny bring this up? Well, the thing is, it's, it's not just that she's the main doctor and she has a lot of money and she lives in Alpine, New Jersey. It's that as the pandemic doctor of Russia, she has continually downplayed the significance of the virus. She has said that basically that it's it's not as dangerous as one would think, and it, they'll get through this. She explains it on some of the daily shows. She has there's an evening show that she's on. It's kind of like the the um, Stephen Colbert show or the Jimmy Fallon show. It's called Ivan or Gant for those of you who are interested. But but the thing is, she's on this channel called Channel One. And Channel One is you know, the, the Fox News of Russia. Now, again, all the channels in Russia are controlled by the government. So they're all Fox. Okay, They're all like Fox. Now, the difference is in the United States, we do have Fox and Sinclair, and they're causing a lot of problems. But in Russia, every single media organization is controlled by Putin and the state and this causes a big problem because this woman keeps coming on telling us all about the coronavirus and how it's not a big problem in Russia and they're going to take care of things and we're going to be okay and then you start getting the idea of of where Navalny is coming from here because she's playing around on TV throwing this propaganda out much like Trump would with his press briefings she's doing the dirty work for Putin and they're, in, in, in a certain sense, making light of the pandemic, okay? Having somebody have a headdress as the coronavirus. And she's telling everybody not to worry. Wow, one, they're not getting paid. They're not working. The danger is obviously greater than what she says because we've seen, again, this skyrocketing of cases and deaths in, in Moscow. And, and what does she do? What does this patriot do? This great patriot, like we see in the United States with some people. You know, the people who, like Trump, you know, cadet bone spurs, but he's never, he's never served. Well, this Russian patriot, what does she do? She sends her kids to school in the United States. She buys a mansion worth $6.4 million. And meanwhile, the people back home are having a hell of a time surviving because the average Russian can't deal with this. And, and to make things worse, because there aren't the PPEs, a lot of the doctors aren't even going into the hospitals. They aren't going in because they, aren't, they can't be protected. They go in, they'll come out dead at some point in time. And this is what Navalny ex exposes in his YouTube video. And again, this is... This is not something that you would see on a Russian channel, like Channel One, their Fox News. You just won't see it. So a Russian has to be able to get to YouTube. And Putin, Putin himself is trying to, to put down YouTube because he knows that you know, there is a 
problem here because YouTube can expose him. And this is, of course, again, why they'd want to get rid of it. Okay? But meanwhile, she is, you know, all over the place on Russian media, again, downplaying everything. Um, you think she's Mary Poppins here. And this is what's going to anger the Russian people because, you know, Putin does have, just like Trump, he does have an army of people who like him, you know, maybe 30% of the people. They, you know, they buy into that crap on, on Channel One, just like some people buy into Hannity or Brit Hume on Fox. You know, they buy into this crap. But once they start dying, or they can't eat. Because you have to remember, the Russian government gets most of its money uh, from oil. I mean, it's, it's an economy the size of France or smaller, but it's a huge country of 11 time zones. But they completely rely on oil. And of course, the, the price of oil has had a catastrophic uh, falling of prices. So it's even harder for Russia right now. And, and meanwhile... These people are having a holiday. They're buying mansions all around New York. And it's just not her. The couple that you see right there, they have shows and they're doing the same thing. And unfortunately, we're not, they're not getting the news out. You know, they're, they're going to have to get the news through YouTube. And hopefully, we'll see more viral videos like this, which will expand... Navalny's influence. Either that or he's going to end up dead, which did happen to somebody in 2004, I believe. You know, you, you speak up a little too loudly or start, start to make progress, um, you'll end up with your brain splatter on the on Red Square, if need be. Right? So... What, what I guess what I would like to, to mention is, and again, here's Mother Sheva. If you want to visit her, she's probably up in North Jersey right now. Probably making her videos from North Jersey. But um, my, my Russian friends have told me, you know, they, they respect what I think about Trump. They understand that that's the truth, what I tell them, that what's happening is it's a crisis in this country, not just the pandemic. But the struggle between the two parties. They understand that. But above all, they want me to understand. And what I guess I should try to transmit to you, no pun intended, is that they've dealt with this kind of crap for 50 or 60 years. Because the government of Russia controls the media, all the governors all the courts, and the military. You've got everything happening at once. And if our president, and I hate calling him the president, but if our president gets control of the media, could you imagine Fox controlling our media and, and Hannity coming on every night? If they control the media, they just, I mean, Trump would have just about everything. He's got the military, he's commander-in-chief. He's got the Senate, Mitch McConnell. Congress he doesn't have yet. That he doesn't have. He doesn't even need to have the people. He just needs to have his 30% with the guns so they can point him at us, like those people in Michigan. So, and, and this is nothing new to you. You can see where this thing could go. But I understand now what they're saying is they, they do have sympathy for us, what's going on. But they, they can't... They can't be empathetic because they already have the feeling. They know what it's like. They've known what it's like. And it's always been lost over there. You know, you don't... Um, you don't always hear about this in the news, so... Get it from me. Thanks.